Blender. Okay. All right, this will be the long version of a tutorial how to build a building. All right, let's go ahead and get started. First thing we need to do, let me go ahead and turn on screencast key so you can see what I'm doing just in case I, for some reason, forget to talk. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start off with a cylinder. Add mesh and then cylinder. Now I need to make this 64 vertices. All right, set that to 64 vertices. Now I need to go ahead and scale this down on the z-axis. Press S for scale, Z for the z-axis, and then .05. Enter. Now it's important anytime you're working with modifiers and stuff like that, go ahead and apply the scale. Control A and then scale. And it's also important whenever you're working with um, physics objects. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and add another cylinder. This bottom this cylinder will be basically the building itself. And then this second cylinder, we're going to modify that into the railing for the balconies. So I'm going to press Add, Mesh, and then Cylinder. Now I'm going to change this to 128 vertices. All right. Now I'm going to scale it on the z-axis, S for scale, Z for the z-axis, and then .05, enter. And then press Control A to apply the scale. I'm going to go ahead and press G and then Z to grab it on the z-axis and then just move it up here out of the way. Go back to the uh, this cylinder and we need to modify it a little bit. Press tab to go into edit mode and then put this on face select. Alright, now select the top face. Now in my version of Blender 2.8 I have it set up so that selecting that I select by right clicking. The default select is left click now, but the old version was right click and I'm used to the old version, so I have it set up for right click. So if I accidentally say right click to select, just ignore that and just uh, select however yours is set up. All right, go ahead and select the top face and we need to inset this face. So press I for inset and then point one, enter. Now we need to extrude this on the Z axis. So press E for extrude and then point two, enter. All right, at this point, let's go ahead and set up a couple of materials. Click on the materials tab, click new, name this material building, Now, you can set up the material however you want, but in this tutorial, I'm just going to keep it the default material. All right, now I'm going to pl press plus and then new to create a second material. I'm going to name this material window. I'm going to change this to an emission shader and then make it just ever so slightly yellowish. All right. Now, I want to select every other face going around this cylinder. So just select one of them, it doesn't matter where you start, and then shift select every other face holding down the shift key. And just do this all the way around. It shouldn't take no more than 30 seconds or so. And then once we have them all selected, click on Windows, on the Windows material, and then click Assign. And we're just essentially telling uh, Blender that those selected faces are going to have this material, and the rest of the object has this material. 
All right, now let's go ahead and press tab to exit edit mode. And we'll select this top cylinder and we're going to we're going to modify this into the railing. And there's the easiest way to modify it into the railing is like this. Select it, press tab to go into edit mode. And we need to get rid of this top face. So select the top face, press delete, and choose faces. Now we need to get rid of this bottom face, and we also need to get rid of this bottom edge. So in this case, we can do it all at one time. Click on the edge icon, and then press Alt, and then select that edge. That way it selects it all the way around. And then press delete and then choose edges. Now this leaves only the vertices going around the top and the and the vertical vertices which is exactly what we want because we're going to convert that into the railing essentially. So go ahead and press tab to exit edit mode and then press alt and then C alt plus C to bring up this and choose curve from mesh because we're essentially turning this into a curve. Now we have this curve option over here. Click on the curve panel and then down here in the geometry sub panel we have something called bevel depth. Now if we adjust this we can see how it adds geometry to it. Now we want to set this to point zero five and then in pardon me point zero zero five enter and then turn the resolution down to one because we don't need a whole lot of details and this is going to be kind of you know small and we're going kind of for a low poly and simple anyway all right so at this point we need to go ahead and press one to go in the front side view and we need to bring this down till it's just barely touching. We want it to just barely be touching this edge. That way it can be the railing of this balcony. So press G for grab, Z for the Z axis, and then just bring it down till it's just about, just barely touching, all right? Now press seven to go on the top side view and I'm going to put this in wireframe by pressing Z that brings up this menu and then click on wireframe and the reason why we're doing that is because we can see what we're doing better. I'm just zooming in a little bit and I want to scale this down but not on the Z axis and only on the X and Y axis so it's smaller in diameter but not taller or it doesn't adjust the height just the diameter. So I'm going to press S for scale and then shift Z the letter Z and then just drag it in to about right there now if we press Z again and put it in solid view and if I if I zoom out and then kind of look at it we can see what the railing kind of looks like all right at this point let's go ahead and press Alt C once again to bring up this menu and then we want to convert it back into a mesh so make sure this is selected make sure this shows mesh from curve alright once we do that let's go ahead and add a material to this railing so I'm going to click on materials click new and I'm just going to turn this into a metallic, sort of like a chrome color. And then set the roughness to 0.25. All right. Now, we need to combine or join this railing to this building. So with the railing selected, press Shift and then right click or left click, however yours is set up, on the building. So that both of them are selected. Alternatively, you could do it this way with the railing selected or the building selected or, you know, 
nothing selected. You could press B for box select and then left click to select that way. But either way you need to have both of them selected. And then press Control J to join both of them into a single object. All right, now press one to go in the front side view. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit and then just drag this down. Now we need to add a modifier. So click on the modifiers tab, add modifier and choose array. And then we want to duplicate these on the Z axis. So we need to, right now it dupl it's duplicated on the X axis. So we need to turn the X axis to zero and then the Z axis to one. And then right here on the count, this is the number of duplications. Or in this specific example, it would be the number of floors. So I want my building to be 50 floors tall. So set that to 50 and suddenly I got 50 stories. All right. And if uh, I want to, let's say, adjust something, make, make a modification to it, all I do is modify this bottom one. Like if I press tab to go into edit mode, I edit it down here and then edit, then whenever I leave edit mode, the rest of them change accordingly. I hope that makes sense. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn on my camera, go into camera view. And to go into camera view, you just press zero and you can navigate through your camera if uh, so long as you have the camera selected and you have this checked lock camera to view so if I if it's unselected and I try to navigate through the camera I'm just dragging the camera but if I have this selected then I'm navigating through the camera all right now I'm gonna go ahead and add a ground plane so press add mesh and then plane and then I'm going to scale that up to an arbitrary amount. It, the amount's not, it really doesn't matter. Just make it big. And then if we go up here to the rendered icon and then look through it, we can see what the building actually looks like. And it's not bad. I mean, it's not perfect by no stretch of the imagination, but it is not bad. I mean it's very simple and if we put this put set the world to completely black it actually looks a little bit better in my opinion and of course you can play with the materials make it however you want and you know add your personal touches to it and in my opinion for the little bit of effort to win into this it actually looks pretty good but if you have any questions, leave a comment below and I will try my best to help you. Anyway, thanks for watching. Later, people. Thank you for watching this video. Here are four other videos you might like. If you liked this video, please give it a like, share it, or leave a comment. I try to respond to every comment on every video regardless how old the video is. Also, please support your favorite YouTubers by disabling ad blockers. Thanks again. Later.